In March 2025, when the live fire images of Chinese Air Force Su 30 MKK fighters mounting Russian made or 7 3 combat rounds were revealed, many wondered why these fighters were still using old fashioned Soviet era designs, even though new generation combat rounds such as the domestically produced PL 5E, PL 8B, and PL 10 had been fully loaded. The oldest of these aircraft is still using the old fashioned Soviet era design behind this phenomenon not only reflects the historical lineage of the development of Chinese Air Force equipment, but also reveals the complexity of military resource management and strategic considerations. Our 7-3 fighting bombs were born in the 1980s. As the iconic weapon of the Soviet Air Force, its maximum range of 30 kilometers, speed of Mach 2.5 performance has led the trend of a generation, and even by the West as the air scalpel. When China introduced the Su-27SK and Su-30 series of fighters in the 1990s, it simultaneously purchased a large number of matching Russian-made missiles, such as the Ur-73 and Ur-77, to fill the gaps in domestic air-to-air -air missile technology at the time. At that time, although the Parak-5 has been finalized, but due to technical immaturity is difficult to assume the role of the main force, and the Parak-8 imitation of the road has not yet completed the breakthrough. The Russian made munitions to deal with the situation in the Taiwan Straits and neighboring threats to the People's Liberation Army. The emergency choice data show that only the Su-30 MKK series of fighters will be imported 100 with a huge inventory of missiles. Even to 2025 is still not completely consumed. This historical baggage to continue to use the direct cause of our 73. However, the inventory pressure is only superficial. The deeper logic lies in the dynamic balance between the progressive upgrading of the equipment system and the needs of actual combat. After the 2010s, China has realized the compatibility of the Su-30 series with domestically produced missiles through technological breakthroughs, which has been verified by the mounting of the PL-12 medium range and PL-8B combat missiles. But why not completely replace Russian-made munitions? On the one hand, although the new generation of fighting rounds such as the PL-10 has excellent performance, its adaptation requires more complex system integration, while the Su-30 MKK, as a platform that has been in service for more than 20 years, has been gradually replaced by domestically produced multi-purpose fighters such as the J-16, and the cost-effectiveness of large-scale improvement is limited. On the other hand, the R-73 is still practical in low-intensity missions, such as daily patrols, driving out foreigners, and so on. On the other hand, the R-73 is still useful in low-intensity missions, such as daily patrols and foreign aircraft removal, which require less extreme performance of the missile, and consuming the stock can avoid waste and reserve more advanced domestic munitions for high-intensity conflicts. This phenomenon of old and new coexisting is not unique. The PLA Army still retains the Red Arrow 73 anti-tank missile, and some naval vessels are still equipped with the Russian-made Sunburst, supersonic anti-ship missiles, reflecting the integrated thinking of depletion of stocks and gradual replacement. The depletion of stocks and gradual replacement of the integrated thinking. It is worth noting that the continued use of Russian-made missiles does not mean technological dependence. From the PL-12 comprehensive replacement of the R-77 medium-range bombs to J-20 carrying PL-15 to achieve range crush. China has long since got rid of the systematic demand for Russian-made weapons, and today's R-73 is more of a specific platform and mission scenarios under the transition choice. In the future, with the gradual decommissioning of the Su-30 fleet, this historical silhouette will eventually fade from view, while the Chinese Air Force's missile system, with the PL-10, PL-15, and even more cutting-edge hypersonic weapons as a pen, writing a new chapter of independent innovation, in retrospect, the introduction of the Su-30 MKK was a key step in the modernization of the Chinese Air Force. At the beginning of this century, the Su-30 MKK not only made up for the shortcomings of the Chinese Air Forces over the horizon air combat capability, but also achieved the first breakthrough in precision ground combat and electronic countermeasures. In the strategic games in the Taiwan Strait, the East China Sea and the Sino-Indian border, the Su-30 MKK has long played the role of strategic cornerstone, with its 3,000-kilometer range and multi-mission flexibility. Even after the J-16 is in service, 
Its value as a transition platform cannot be ignored, for example, in the public reports of 2023, the Su-30MKK has demonstrated its air superiority combat capability with a 4-in-4 mounted configuration, which is not only a practical use of its stockpile of munitions, but also a practical use of the Su-30MKK's airborne munitions, which can be used in the battlefield. This configuration is both an operational use of stockpiled munitions and a full utilization of the platform's remaining lifespan. From the perspective of techno-economics, the replacement of military equipment is by no means a simple case of eliminating the old. The R-73, for example, costs about $300,000 per unit, while the PL-10 costs more than $1 million per unit. In peacetime, the gradual depletion of stockpiles through low-intensity missions not only saves the defense budget, but also buys time for the production capacity of subsequent domestically produced munitions to ramp up. In addition, the maintenance system of Russian-made missiles has long been mature, with low logistical support costs, which contrasts sharply with the current situation of the PL-10, requiring a completely new maintenance chain. This cost-benefit trade-off is particularly important in the context of the trend of refined military expenditure management. A deeper strategic consideration lies in maximizing deterrent effectiveness. Su-30MKK mounted her 7-3 picture through the media, not only to the outside world to pass the combat readiness normalization signal, but also implies a psychological game of potential rivals. The skilled use of old equipment, often suggesting a more powerful war potential reserves. The Chinese Air Force has also been using the old equipment as a signal for normalizing combat readiness. At the same time, the Chinese Air Force has demonstrated the compatibility and tactical flexibility of its equipment system through mixed mounting and this ability to integrate the old with the new is itself an important symbol of a modern army. Looking ahead, the combination of Su-30MKK and R-73 is destined to be a special product of the transition period. With the release of the J-16's production capacity and the advancement of the sixth-generation aircraft program, the Chinese Air Force's generational change of equipment has entered the fast lane. However, the lesson of this history is far from being outdated. Military modernization is not only a technological leap forward, but also a comprehensive manifestation of resource management, strategic patience and combat wisdom. From the R-73 to the PL-10, from the Su-30 to the J-20, the Chinese Air Force is using a unique path of progressive innovation to outline a new picture of the air power of a great nation in the tension between tradition and change.